Hope for Anxiety and OCD, episode 39. On today's episode, we have a personal story with Shelly Rainey. Shelly has a pretty amazing story about the connection between anxiety and grief and loss. I was blown away by her story and how much she has overcome with the help of the Lord. So without further ado, let's get into the interview. Shelly, welcome to the show and tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, first, thank you so much, Carrie, for having me on your show. I really appreciate it. Well, about me, let's see. I am a mom of a beautiful 16-year-old daughter, a wife of a super amazing husband, and I'm also the author of the inspirational book, The Fragile Heart, and host of the Turning Point podcast. And recently, I launched The Inspired Life by SLR, and basically all that is is just a ministry that's geared towards women who are trying to navigate through pain and depression and grief and all of that. And what I do is I offer resources in a community to help during those rough times because, you know, when you're going through hard times like that, the worst feeling is the fact that you feel like you're alone. Right. And what I try to do is just, you know, basically say you're not alone. You know, we have a whole community here that we're basically, you know, wanting to help in any way we can, whether it's through an encouraging blog or, you know, some of the free resources that I have through ebooks or the podcast or anything. And yeah, it's great. And I just launched it, wow, maybe three weeks ago. <laughs> so it's brand new. <laughs> wow. That is, yes. that is new. Yes. Okay. So you wanted to come on and tell us a little bit about your own personal experience with anxiety and depression. Yes, I basically have experienced anxiety and depression at different points of my, in my life. And I can just remember it, dealing with a little bit of it when I was a teenager around the age of 16. And I don't know if that was just like a typical thing to just have these depressing moments, but I did. And that was like the first time, but most of the time I can say they feelings of depression and all of that and anxiety was usually attached to, for me, traumatic situation. And for me, I've lost three children. Wow. And I remember I was about 27 when I lost my first daughter. She was stillborn when I was about seven and a half months pregnant. And I recall that was one of the worst times for me when it comes to dealing with depression because it lasts such a long time. And it had gotten to the point where I was tired of dealing with the pain and the sadness, and I just wanted it to go away. But I was at a dangerous point. I was at a dangerous point with it where I actually considered suicide. Wow. And because I just wanted the pain to stop. Sure. And of course, you know, I grew up in a family where we were taught to rely on our faith, you know, and trust God through all of the hard circumstances. And, you know, watching my parents, they were like the living examples, you know, when hard times hit, you know, you just rely on your faith and God carries you through. But for me, that was just a dark time for me. And I felt like it was kind of difficult to rely on my faith and the foundation that I actually grown up in because it was just, it felt like I was overwhelmed by the grief, by the sadness, by the depression, the anxiety, all of it. And it was, it was pretty difficult. And I can recall just getting to that point where I was like, I can't take it anymore. But it's something how when you're in the darkest place and it's like your foundation, it comes back to you. And I can recall sitting down in the floor with a bottle of pills and I just stopped and I began to pray. And I said, God, please help me. That's all I could get out. Was right. just, please help me, you know. And let me just tell you, instantly, it's just like I just felt an overwhelming sense of peace. 
And I'm like, wow, well, it's like I was getting a big hug <laughs> at that moment. And I was like, wow, this is a feeling that I haven't had in a long time, you know? And I can recall, you know, just going through that and having the support of my family and everything where I was able to come up out of it, of course, but it just took a long time. And then as time went on, I had a miscarriage maybe two and a half years later, and I felt a little bit of depression coming back, but it wasn't something that basically overtook me because I was getting married three weeks later. Wow. So okay. Excitement of getting married and my life changing. I think that kind of overshadowed my feelings where I was able to tuck them away and compartmentalize it and focus on my wedding. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so I, w- I was good, you know, but of course, every now and again, the sadness would come back up. And with me, I was going through a situation where the doctor said I could not have children. And it wasn't too long after, you know, my husband and I were married, I found out I was pregnant again. And I was petrified. And I was like, I can't endure that again. I cannot go through another loss. I've already had two. I don't have it in me to do another one. And um, so we prayed. And let me just tell you, it was like God carried me through that entire pregnancy, because even though it was rough, and I was on bed rest, almost the entire time. But that's where our miracle daughter, Hannah, she was born healthy. And she's like I said, she's 16 now. That's awesome. (laughs) Yes, yes. And so it's just like everything is going along just great. But I remember back in 2008, I found out we were expecting again. And this time it was a little different. Because, you know, although I delivered very early. I think we were about seven and a half months pregnant again. And our daughter, Victoria, she was one pound, four and a half ounces. She was very tiny, but the doctor said she had a strong heart and everything was going great. And I was just so excited because I'm like, yes, another miracle. God did it again. This is just great. But 21 days later, she took a turn for the worse and she passed away. And let me just tell you, I'm at a different place in my life when this was going on because I relied on my faith more. You know, my faith had increased through the years. You you know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. So it's different going through that loss than going through the earlier losses. Exactly. Exactly. And watching, you know, and I think with God showing me the miracle of my daughter had a lot to do with that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so after this loss, I didn't feel hopeless. Okay. But the sadness was still there. You know, depression didn't grip me the same way, but it kind of sort of, I had my moments and I said, you know what, I'm going to deal with this situation a little bit differently. And I just began to write just, because I, I, I couldn't sleep at night. I sat up would cry a lot, you know? And the question came to my mind a lot. It seemed like, Lord, you've chosen me to endure a lot of pain. <laughs> and I don't understand why. <laughs> and I just began to write and write and write and write. And next thing I know, I actually finished <laughs> my first book, which is The Fragile Heart. And I said, you know what I want to do with this situation? And all the what you know, we know that healing, it's a process, right? It doesn't happen overnight. Right. But I figure if I just continue to move forward with something that I could eventually get to the place of healing. And so, you know, after the book was released and everything, I remember God telling me, just share your story. And so I just began speaking at conferences and events, and I had a lot of book signings. And it's just like God just kept me busy for a couple of years with that and just sharing my story and just watching the effect that it had on a lot of different people. I'm just like, wow, you know, and it's like as time went on, I began to understand a little bit of why. You know what I mean? Just a little bit. And I would get out there, Carrie, and I would just speak to large crowds and just get out there and talk about, you know, hope and healing and restoration. 
and go back to my hotel room and just collapse in tears. Because wow. it's just like I'm sharing my story and I'm believing it and I trust God. But that goes to show you it's a process because I was not fully delivered myself. I was still dealing with those sad times. And but God showed me something through all of it. It's like my faith increased each time. And I found that I had to lean on him more and more, even more so than before. And with that, it's like, you know, if you can imagine just feeling like you're totally broken, but bit by bit, God was slowly but surely restoring me. But in the end, it was just like I was this stronger person with more determination more substance you know it was just like he made me all over again and that's the awesome part about it and so now when i look back being on the other side of it i'm like okay god you actually re revealed the why so i get it <laughs> it was yeah. it was bigger than me basically it was sure. so much bigger than me how did you deal with going through that publicly i think i know there are a lot of women out there that have miscarriages very early yeah. And so they don't necessarily have to tell anyone and they tend to suffer in silence. I think more and more women are being more open about pregnancy loss, which is a beautiful thing because a lot of women go through it. Yes. However, when you're seven and a half months along, people are already doing things like throwing you showers probably and, and you have baby stuff in your house. And yeah. now all of a sudden you have to tell these people that, you know, hey, our our child is passed away. Like yeah. what was, was that element of everything going through it publicly hard for you? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And with my family, we're a very close knit family. We have a very large family and it's like they have gone through the entire process with me. And so, you know, with everyone knowing my history and everything I'd gone through, it's like they were kind of sold on pins and needles, of course, but with my daughter Victoria, after she was born, I mean, my great my grandparents flew in from Texas and different people flew in just to meet her because they knew that I endured so much. So it was a beautiful time in the beginning, but like you said, having to walk that out publicly, it was hard. And with me, I am the type of person I'll put on a smile. And unless you know me, you would think I'm okay. And so I would have this instant thing where I'm okay. I don't want you to be sad about it. It's okay. I'm going to be all right. I would go into that very quickly. You know, you had the brave face that the you put on for face. everybody. Absolutely. So that's how I dealt with it publicly. Put on the brave face. And when they see me, they're like, okay, she's all right. She's going to be fine. But in private, fall into pieces. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, yeah, it, it, it was pretty tough. But I think the hardest part for me, especially when we lost Victoria, was my daughter Hannah was so excited about being a big sister. She's like, I'm a big sister. And she used to wear this one shirt all every day. She wanted to wear it every day. So it says, I'm going to be a big sister. Right. <laughs> and yeah. the sad part was coming home and having to tell her, your baby sister is in heaven. I was in my brain. I'm trying to figure out how do I word this? How do I explain to a three-year-old? And that's how I put it to her. I'm like, she's not coming home, but she's an angel and she's watching over us now. And of course, my daughter asked all of the questions. Well, why can't I see her? I just saw her the other day, you know, that type of thing. So that was difficult. However, as time went on, we were able to deal with it better. And the older she had gotten, my daughter, she began to really begin to accept and things like that. So. Mm. Talk to us about maybe the intersection between like anxiety and grief. Obviously, you talked a little bit about anxiety when you would get pregnant again. It was like, oh, how is this going to yeah. go? Yes. It, the anxiety, I think that's torture. I'm just going to tell you that. That feeling of just anxiousness, just all, all of the time. And it was just horrible for me. And Grief, you know, that's the sadness, that's the heaviness, but the anxiousness and the feeling like you're going to have a panic attack and you break out in sweats and it's just that whole just uneasy 
that portion was very, very difficult for me. And I actually experienced it recently in about 2019, I believe, because I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease and I was put on a lot of different medications. And this one particular medication was by way of infusion. And everything totally changed for me. And the career I worked in for more than 20 years, I had to stop. And it was just so many different changes going on. But one of the side effects, even of the medication, was anxiety and depression. And let me just tell you, on top of dealing with my whole scenario changing and sometimes going through excruciating pain and just all of these things and to have anxiety on top of all of that, I felt like, oh my gosh, I felt like I'm just losing my mind here. I was just always on edge, you know? And I actually began, of course I prayed about it and, you know, God help me deal with this and please give me peace. But I also began to seek professional help because I'm like, I need something to bring this thing under control. <laughs> yeah, I think that that's, that's a really important part of a lot of people's journey. And one of the reasons that we have this podcast in the first place is like to reduce shame surrounding getting help, because sometimes people in the church think, well, I have God and God is all I need. And Absolutely. I can just talk to the pastor about it and I'm good. And I don't need like therapy. Therapy is for like, you know, the really crazy people or something. Yeah, exactly. It's just like a stigma that comes along with it. And I can recall going to the doctor because I told my doctor, I said, I, I, I can't deal with this any longer. And she suggested and she said, I know you're a woman of faith. And she had that talk with me. Like, it's OK. It does not mean that you're trusting God any less. The doctors are here to help. Just like you go to the doctor, you come see me. <laughs> it's OK to get help. And it's like, okay. And with her actually helping me get through that whole stigma, which was awesome, it it helped. Let me just tell you, it helped a lot. That is awesome. I'm so glad that she was able to kind of point you in that direction. Were there specific things that you learned either in therapy or just through this journey that you found helpful in kind of helping your body calm down or yes, you know, there it was a couple of things. And of course, spiritually, I've learned to put things in God's hands even more because with my personality, I like to control everything. You know, I like to be in control of my time and control of everything that's going on around me. But of course, when you're dealing with life, it, it's sometimes it's difficult. It's out of control. Yeah. And it's hard to maintain control. And I find myself, found myself having to lean on God and having to just relax and, you know, have the meditation time and my prayer time and just, just go into that quiet place. And as far as going to therapy, they taught me how to, you know, with the breathing exercises and things like that, just relax. It's okay to just allow yourself to relax. And for those times where I just felt like I could not get it together, it's those are the times I really had to pray hard and say, okay, God, I need your help here. And he would always show up for me. I have to say that because sometimes we feel like we're in this battle, especially when you're laying down and your mind's racing and everything's going. And when you're at a place where you say, you know what, God, I'm going to release that. I gave it to you. I'm going to leave it there. And I'm just going to relax and get some sleep <laughs> because yeah. you have it under control. I mean, I, it just had to be a place where I went to in my faith, where I had to totally trust God. Because sometimes we trust him a little bit and we'll give him something, but then we'll grab it back and then we put our hands in it. And that was me. Yes. But I was, t I, you know, let me just tell you, through dealing with anxiety and depression, it taught me how to really lean and depend on God and trust him to work out the circumstances that were going on around me. That's really good. I think there is something to be said about that connection between anxiety and us trying to control all the elements of our lives. And it's impossible. It's absolutely impossible. We can't control relationships that we're in. We can't control our health. We can't control, 
you know, life tragedies like you were talking about. And so when we learn that, okay, the out of control stuff is God's department and I can really just rest. He's king of the universe. He's got it under control. And I can take that step back and just, just breathe. Absolutely. It helps us so much. Yes, it does. It does. Yeah. So how do you feel like specifically this journey has grown your faith? I know that you've talked about it a little bit, but has it affected how you see God? Yes. And it goes back to what I was just saying about trusting him more. I've learned to trust the process. I've learned to just kind of go with it. You know, you know what I mean? Because in this life, there's a process and it's like God has a plan already predestined. He knew back in 2008 when I lost my daughter that I would be in this place right now, this particular moment, sharing that story. And all the while when I was going through it, I'm right in the middle of it. I don't see anything but what's in my immediate surrounding, in my immediate view. I can't see down the line, but he can. <coughs> And so what I've learned is basically trust the process. And I could not say that to you some years ago because back then I, no, I was like, okay, I don't understand what's going on and I need to figure it out. I, I desperately need to figure it out, but not so much anymore because again, through time, through going through various situations and God showing up each time, remaining consistent how he is, it's just like I'm learning, like, okay, if I put it in his hands, he's got it. He already knows how it's going to work out in the end. I don't know, but, you know, eventually I'll get there. But it's just, to get, again, for me, I just learned to uh, lean on God more and just trust the process. Yeah, I think there's an element, too, of thankfulness of for what we do have that grows so much when we've been through tragedy and loss. Absolutely. It's just like, you. for me, the smaller things, the, just enjoying life, just enjoying family, just making memories, making the most of things that happen. Because when my dad passed away a couple of years ago, one thing I learned from that was just continue to make memories, you know, as opposed to trying to always, because, you know, sometimes we have this idea, especially when it comes to our parents, like they're going to be here forever. You know, you don't fathom that they would actually leave us, you know, and um, that was the case with when my dad, you know, was so unexpected. But after, you know, going through that circumstance, it was like, OK, I need to appreciate the small moments now. You know, every every moment that I spend with my mom or my family or whomever, it's a moment to make memories. And so I'm more appreciative of time now. Right. That's good. I think that that's really good. It's a good reminder and lesson for all of us. Absolutely. So towards the uh, end of the podcast, I like to ask every guest to, sh to share a story of hope, which is a time where you received hope from God or another person. I feel weird asking you that question because I feel like that was our whole episode today. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you have anything else that you want to share. or Maybe you can, you know, share about what it's been like speaking to other people and sharing your story. Yeah, absolutely. Because I, I think about this one in particular moment, and I remember I was doing a conference and just sharing my story again, like I was talking about earlier. And I can recall, you know, just kind of sort of going through everything. And at the end, I had this moment where we had music playing and I had everybody just to write down something they were going through and ball it up in a piece of paper and kind of toss it in the basket in the front of the room. So we were going around and the music is going. And this young lady came up to me afterwards and she had tears in her eyes, and I will never forget her. But she grabbed my hand and she said, I thought that my circumstance was hard. She said, when I came here, I felt hopeless. I felt like I'm just going because my friend invited me. She, and she told me, she said, but listening to your story and listening to, you know, she could hear the pain and different things. She said, but talking about how you were able to overcome 
And she said, watching that big smile on your face now, she said, I feel I'm leaving feeling lighter. I'm leaving feeling a, with a sense of hope. And she hugged me and she said, I appreciate you for just getting up here and just your bravery <laughs> to share your story. And thank you so much. And it just gripped my heart because it wasn't necessarily about me, but I just felt in that moment that, wow, God used me as a vessel to actually help somebody else. And that was just the most amazing part of everything. And this is what it's all about. You could just reach one person. It's worth it. That's awesome. Are you essentially in full-time ministry now? Basically, (laughs) and start, yes, basically, because, you know, right now, I, like I said, I just started the um, new online ministry with the community of women who basically have gone through what pain, whether it's losing a loved one or divorce or, I mean, because we endure a lot of different hard situations, right? And it comes from different areas, but it's all the same pain, right? And right. that's the area of ministry that God has me in right now. Awesome. We'll make sure to put uh, links to where people can find you and find the book if they're interested. Thank you so much for just sharing your story. I think that that's going to be impactful to people. Well, thank you so much again for having me. I really, really enjoyed being able to share my story and just knowing that it just hopefully prayerfully will be able to help somebody. Do you want to stay most up to date about what is happening with Hope for Anxiety and OCD? You can follow us on Instagram. We are at Hope for Anxiety and OCD podcast, which I'm pretty sure is like one of the longer Instagram handles I've seen. And we're also on Facebook as well facebook.com slash hope for anxiety and OCD. Thanks for hanging out and listening today. Hope for Anxiety and OCD is a production of By the Well Counseling in Smyrna, Tennessee. Our original music is by Brandon Mangrum and audio editing is completed by Benjamin Bynum. Until next time, may you be comforted by God's great love for you.